Ultimately, we know deeply that the other side of fear is freedom. Marilyn Ferguson. And my friends, I don't want you to be fearful about what is going on. I want you to be I want you to be full of knowledge. I want you to understand where we are, what's happening. I think our our fears to to the things to be concerned about most. I don't think is the coronavirus, not from what I've seen so far, as long as you're not in your 80s, what I'm concerned about is the reaction from the economic community, the government, and what it is doing to us. And the reason I have on the screen, for those that are listening to the podcast, I'm going to tell you what we are looking at. What we are looking at is basically a panic graph. It is, it is a graph of boom and bust. And what we have had happen is basically this new paradigm, thanks to Corona, that has kicked in. And we are currently in the upper portion after the greed and delusion, the enthusiasm, then the greed, then the delusion. Now we're in denial right now. People don't realize that the rug has literally been pulled out from under them. They're, but they're coming to that realization as we have down days like today where they even put the circuit breakers in and then things slammed down back to where they had hammered down in the morning. But I want you to have some understanding of the way these things have played out in the past so you can expect what is coming next. Now, I will make this completely clear. We are not a stock calling service. We are not financial advisors. This is an education firm. I'm giving you what my opinion is and how I am looking at things. Take it as you hear it, but it is not meant to be financial advice in any way at all. But I'm basing this on what I've seen in the past and what I think I'm seeing now. So take it for what it's worth. Now, we are heading toward what I believe and what has happened time and again throughout history to a bull trap. What is that? At some point, I believe the government's going to be intervening, doing things. The market itself is going to sort of appear to bottom out. My friends, that is called the bull trap. That is where it looks like everything's cool. Everybody thinks the panic selling is over. And in fact, there is what we think is a return to normal. Now, think about what has occurred over the last couple of weeks. We have seen the drillers, oil drillers, lose billions of dollars as the price of oil has plummeted as China, as I'm sorry, not China, but Russia and Saudi Arabia have cut the price of oil. We've seen the offshore drillers, the frackers. I mean, those folks are being put out of business, it looks like, from what is going on and this contraction. We have seen overseas shipping slow to a crawl. That is supply chain disruption like you cannot imagine. Colleges are shutting down. Schools are shutting down. Sending students home. If you live in a college town, imagine what it is going to be like for those, co- for, for those towns with no college students there. This isn't summertime yet. We, we're, we're losing things right at the time that they're trying to make money so they can survive the summer. So again, folks, it is going to be tough. Now we're going to see Things bounce back up at some point in the probably not too distant future. And then we're going to think everything is okay. Folks, that is the brief pause before the plunge. When that happens, after everybody think it's re- it thinks it's returned to normal and all these shock waves then kick in, truly kick in, that is when the fear, then the capitulation, then the despair. And I don't know how long that will go on. I do know that we're going to have an opportunity for even more (laughs) short trading. And again, for you to practice your short trades, we are not a stock calling service. We're not going to give you advice on what to do with real money. But we're going to be talking about every day what we are up to and what we are looking at. So I want you to pay close attention to this graph, both on valuation and time. And what we are in right now, we are in the denial phase. We will hit a bull trap. 
The market will bounce back. Everyone will act like everything is recovering. You will hear that on the news. It was a short-term panic. Everything's okay. Then, my friends, we if, if it goes like it has in the past, we're going to roll off the deep end and we're going to see things really, really hammer down. So watch the market for those things. Let's jump into this market. I hope that's helpful. Remember <coughs> when I put this line on the map where it looked like we had some resistance and we did have resistance and then things just plummeted through it. Well, we will continue to keep an eye on where things are going, where they are, what is happening. Now, let's look at the S&P 500. Again, as I showed you on that shorter chart, it is pushed through what we hoped would be a some kind of resistance. It did show some resistance over uh, a few days, but it has been pushed through now on that weekly chart. Again, one more day. We see the price percent oscillator dropping further, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Big, big red down candle. When's the last time you saw one that big? I don't know, my friends. It is a bad week. It is a bad, bad week. I am so glad I am not in the market. Let's see what's going on on the two-day chart. Now, you know, before I really get away from that weekly, if you will just bear with me, I, you know, this is the magic of the weekly vertical crossover. For those who didn't see it coming, well, we saw it. We called it when it crossed over. Weren't super positive about it because what did the market do? Now, see that? That was the crossover going down the week ending February 28. What did it do? Well, what it did after that is, if you look at what happened, we saw after that occurred, things slid sideways for literally about six days, and then the real plunge started going down on our two-day chart. And of course, this latest plunge representing Wednesday and Thursday, pushing through what we had hoped would be, had, had been some support for a couple of days, it just pushed through it. And in fact, cranked over, heading down, derivative oscillator, gaining downward momentum, price percent oscillator, slamming down. Four-hour chart. Remember us telling you about that four-hour crossover back on the morning of the 9th and the jumping in point there on the afternoon of Monday the 9th, slid sideways, told you to be patient. Well, those of you who practice traded that, your patience paid off on that, on that SH trade, did it not? What is SH? It is a short chart for the S&P 500. What did it do? Well, of course, it skyrocketed. Jumping in point was there on Monday afternoon, slid sideways, and then boom, banged up for you uh, quite nicely over the course of the day on Thursday. Now, these are short charts. Remember, they rebalance every day. You have to be very careful when you're playing with those. And again, we're not talking about real money. We're talking about practice trades. We want you to figure out how this works. Practice trade this stuff. Make it work for you. If you are practice trading options, whew, you better be careful and you better feel really confident knowing what you are doing. No trouble practice trading it, but don't beat yourself up if you have a hard time with the volatility. Much easier and safer to practice trade ETFs. Now, let's go to the Qs. What's happening there? We're going to start with the weekly chart, as we always do. It crossed over back on the 28th also. Next week, down a little bit, really. I mean, look at this. It didn't go down a great deal that second week. We didn't feel real good about what was going on. Why? We weren't plumbing lower lows because the lower lows are shown on our Heiken Ashi candlesticks by these wicks. We didn't get as low as the prior week. So what happened this week? Of course, things dropped off the deep end. Price percent oscillator slamming down, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Look at this latest two-day chart. We see the same thing. Price well below the weekly and the two-day. Really, folks, just hammer, hammer down. Now we go to the four-hour chart. Same thing happened on there, crossed over on that four-hour chart after popping up back on the fourth, crossed over going down on the ninth. This is the kind of stuff you're going to be looking for in a highly volatile market, your four-hour, even your two-hour chart. 
are things you can look for the potential of jumping in points for moves going in coordination with your two-day and your weekly trend lines and, of course, your weekly vertical crossover, which is the main, main determinant. So we saw things slide sideways and then, of course, moving down on uh, Wednesday afternoon and then hammer down on Thursday morning, further down Thursday afternoon. So those did work. Again, what's the inverse fund for you to practice trade on QQQ? PSQ. That was my last trade that I did. Successful closed me out of that earlier. So again, look at it hammering up. Uh, and when we see how it's been going over these last few weeks, you can see what it's come from and gone to in just three weeks. So that's pretty amazing. want you to practice trade this stuff. You're not going to get good at any of this if you're not practice trading. If you are using real money in markets like this and have no experience, you have no reason to be using your money. All you're going to be doing is losing your money. So please, please practice with us every day. Learn how this works. There's going to be plenty of time. You know, hopefully you're going to live a long time and have lots of ability to practice trade and all this stuff. So let's now move on to 20-year bonds. Remember, they were down yesterday. They recovered today up 0.62%, the only thing on our charts that are up. Big old wick on the top, big candle. We see the price percent oscillator is eking back up. It's not quite flat. It was much flatter earlier in the week. Derivative oscillator still losing momentum. Again, we're going primarily by that price percent oscillator. Two-day chart was going down steeper than it, than it uh, is at the end of it. We're just talking when we looked at it that first day. In the second day, pulled back and we see, or I guess pulled up, we would say, got a wick on the bottom. We are above the two-day trend line, well above the weekly. Do have a red spinning top, means indecision tending down, derivative oscillator losing momentum. Price percent oscillator still positive. So when we get to the four-hour chart, remember that rotated over going down on the in the afternoon on Wednesday. It was up in the morning, bit of a, a, a loss in the afternoon, still up. These are Heiken Ashi candlesticks right there on that two-day trend line. To jump back into bonds, you probably are going to want to wait to find a jumping in point, if you ever got out, uh, for the four-hour chart to cross back over for a successful practice trade. And again, depending on your experience and your experimentation with the two-hour chart, that might be something that offers an earlier opportunity, but because it's a smaller chart, more risk. Now, we're going to leave bonds. We've already left stocks. Lastly, we go to gold. Look at gold down for the day. 3.99%. Price percent oscillator hasn't crossed over going down, but it's headed down. Derivative oscillator <coughs> has gone negative. We see that the candle for this week so far is blowing through our weekly trend line. And we got a red spinning top. It's almost a doji. Lots of movement up and down, so lots of indecision in that weekly chart. Lot, lot of indecision. We go to the two-day. That's showing us more down movement. We got a long wick on the bottom, little wick on top, solid red down candle, pushing through the weekly trend line. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. And guess what? Our trade in gold is now out because we have a confirmed two-day crossover going down in gold. So until we see the two-day chart recover and cross back over going up, we don't deal with schizophrenia very well. We're going to go ahead and mark that, take ourselves out of a gold trade at this time until that two-day chart recovers. So again, if you're holding a gold practice position, you want to be really, really thinking twice or three or four times about why you are still in it. Four-hour chart crossed over going down back on the afternoon of Tuesday the 10th, slid sideways and then dropped off hammering down this morning and then in the evening on Thursday, in the afternoon on Thursday. Folks, that's where we are. Exciting times can be scary times, but again, my friends, remember, knowledge is power. 
And the way you're going to get knowledge and wisdom in the market is being with us every day, practice trading, knowing what's going on. And again, I commend to you the beginning of the video today where we looked at what a crash looks like, what a bubble looks like. And we are in that first phase. There is going to be a, that, that leveling out point and then the bounce up, the bull trap. Don't get caught in it. Pay attention. Be with us every day. Study to show yourself approved. We've got a great training for you. I'm putting it out again just in case you haven't watched it before. If you have, watch it again. It's called Inverse ETFs, Succeeding When Markets Crash. We put that out a couple of three years ago, and it is more valuable now than ever. How do you get it? you got to be a subscriber. Go to chartingwealth.com. Sign up for free. Put in your name, email address, You'll get our trainings every single day. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.